Hello everyone. Today I am going to present my paper on an accountable access control scheme for hierarchical content in named networks with revocation. I am Nasrullah Sultan and my co-authors are Vijay Vardrajan, Said Kemte and Surya Nepal. Before moving forward, uh, I would like to give a brief overview on name data networking. Uh, I'll refer name data networking as NDN in short in the rest of my presentation. Uh, NDN is a new internet architecture designed to cope with the shortcomings of the traditional IP-based networking architecture. I'm not going to discuss uh, them in this presentation as you can find uh, in the papers which I have included in the references. Let us consider a simple NDN architecture having two consumers, uh, one NDN router and one content provider. The content provider uh, is the entity which generates contents or data. The consumers are the entities uh, who want to access those contents. To access the contents, uh, the consumer sends uh, interest requests or interest packets uh, to the content provider. Uh, suppose consumer one uh, wants to access <coughs> a content named XYZ. The consumer generates an interest packet uh, and sends it to the S router, uh, which forwards uh, the interest packet towards the content provider. The format of the uh, interest packet is something like this. Uh, the first field uh, represents content name, which, which is unique. For example, uh, abc.com slash xy slash v1. Uh, uh, here, abc.com is a domain name, xyz is a file name, and uh, v1 is the version number of that file. And uh, there can be uh, other fields such as selectors, nouns. Once the uh, interest packet uh, reads at the Indian router, the Indian router uh, first checks uh, if the requested content uh, uh, is in its content store, uh, which is a cache memory of the router. If the content is not present uh, in the content store, the router will then check uh, if it has an entry for the same uh, content in its pending interest table or pit in short. If there is an entry uh, for the content, then the router will add the incoming interface number uh, with the existing entry and will not forward the interest packet as it has already forwarded an interest request for the same content for some other consumers. Otherwise, uh, it will make an entry uh, into the uh, pit and forward, forwards it to the destination. Uh, this forwarding is done uh, based on another table called forwarding information base uh, or FIB in short. The FIB contains the routing information. Once the uh, interest packet reads at the content provider, uh, it generates the content and sends them back to the consumer. Uh, the data packets follow the reverse part of the interest packet. Uh, the format of the data packet is something like this. Uh, the first field contains the content name, then signature, then signature information, and followed by the actual data. While uh, forwarding the data packets, the intermediate routers can keep a copy of the data packets in its content store so that if any other consumer or, uh, or the same consumer requests for the same content, the router can itself satisfy their request without contacting the content provider. Therefore, a content provider loses control over their data. Uh, if the routers are compromised or misbehave, uh, then unauthorized entities may get access to the data packets that can have a negative effect on the content provider's business. Therefore, uh, access control uh, is an important requirement, which allows access to the content uh, only to the authorized consumers. It may also happen that uh, some uh, malicious consumer or attacker send bogus interest packets to flood the network that can adversely affect the services to the genuine consumers. As such, uh, denial of service attack is another important issue in NDN. Another uh, important requirement is uh, ISP accountability. Due to the cache property of the routers, uh, ISP plays an important role by providing services to the consumers without contacting the content provider. 
As such, uh, it is very hard for the content provider to know the exact services that have been provided by the ISP. The main rationale behind our work is to provide uh, access control over hierarchy contents. For example, uh, video streaming services such as Netflix, Amazon Prime, etc. Uh, use um, hierarchical contents. That means the contents can be uh, organized um, or categorize uh, into different groups and the groups can be organized in a hierarchical form. A typical uh, hierarchy is shown in the figure uh, where the contents are grouped based on different characteristics such as genre, video quality, etc. There are uh, multiple benefits if we organize contents in a hierarchical form uh, such as uh, it provides better consumer choice, it provides uh, different subscription options based on consumer preferences. It, uh, it provides better key management uh, due to uh, inheritance property. Uh, for example, uh, a consumer subscribing for higher level contents can also assess the lower level contents. There are several works uh, that try to address uh, the access control issues. Uh, these works can be uh, divided into two groups, uh, one is authentication based and the other is uh, encryption based. In the uh, authentication based schemes, the consumers are um, authenticated first before sending the data packets. Uh, in the encryption based schemes, the contents are encrypted uh, and the authorized consumers are given secret keys so that they can decrypt the secret text. Uh, in access control, uh, privilege revocation is also an uh, important requirement. Uh, the privileges of the consumers can be revoked uh, in two ways. Uh, one is expiration and the other is immediate. In expiration based uh, revocation mechanism, the consumers uh, will be uh, automatically revoked after their uh, validity period expire. In uh, immediate revocation, the consumers can be revoked uh, before uh, their validity period expire. So uh, as I have explained earlier that uh, the uh, denial of service attack uh, can happen when attacker uh, can send bogus interest packets. To prevent this, uh, a few schemes have introduced an authentication mechanism uh, that enables the edge router to authenticate the consumers before forwarding their interest packets uh, into the network. This can help uh, to prevent bogus interest packets going into the network. Uh, to address the ISP accountability issue, uh, two schemes uh, introduced signature schemes that allow the consumer to generate signatures. Uh, and these signatures are sent uh, along with the interest packets, which the ISP keeps to proving its services to the consumers. In the next few slides, uh, I'm going to uh, present our proposed scheme to address the uh, mentioned challenges in NDN. Our main goal uh, is to design a broadcast encryption scheme that enables the content provider to encrypt, uh, to encrypt uh, its content before publishing for its consumers. We use uh, a role-based encryption technique to design our broadcast encryption mechanism. Uh, Basically, the role-based encryption technique is a public key encryption method uh, which retains the properties of the traditional role-based access control model. Uh, that means uh, it supports inheritance property. In this slide, uh, I'm going to uh, describe briefly about RB technique, that is role-based encryption technique. Suppose the content provider has some contents which are divided into uh, eight categories and those categories are organized in a hierarchical form as shown in the figure. Uh, I'll refer this hierarchy as content hierarchy from now onwards. Uh, each category or node uh, in the content hierarchy is associated with a public key. Uh, our encryption mechanism uh, has two parts. Uh, in the first part, the content provider uh, encrypts the actual content of a category uh, using a symmetric key, K. This can be uh, done using any secure symmetric key encryption method. Uh, in the second part, 
the symmetric key k is encrypted using the uh, public key associated with that category uh, this is done using our proposed uh, rbe that is role based encryption method uh, the rb ciphertext has four components uh, c1 c2 c3 and cri as you can see in the slide uh, this encryption uh, is done in such a way that uh, any consumer uh, subscribe for that category or any higher level that is ancestor category can use their secret key for decryption for example uh, if uh, if the content of r2 uh, is encrypted using the public key uh, pk2 then any consumer from r2 category as well as any consumer from uh, from r1 and rr category can decrypt it afterwards uh, the content provider combines both the ciphertext that is the symmetric key encryption part of the ciphertext and the rbe part of the ciphertext uh, into one file and send it to the consumer each category uh, in the content hierarchy is also associated with a set of consumers who subscribe for it and each consumer uh, is assigned with a unique secret key uh, this secret key is used uh, to uh, generate signatures uh, which we will see in the next slide and to decrypt the safer text a simple secret key of a consumer uh, is shown in the slide uh, which consists of uh, three secret components uh, the content provider uh, also generates some public keys for each consumer uh, a simple uh, public key of a consumer is shown in the slide uh, it consists of three public components moreover uh, the content provider also generates uh, some proxy encryption keys and some accumulator values uh, we uh, we will see their use in the next few slides in our proposed scheme uh, as router verifies the authenticity of a consumer before forwarding uh, its interest packets into the network we have introduced a signature mechanism that helps uh, the as routers to verify the authorized consumers at the uh, consumer side before sending any interest packet uh, a consumer uh, generates a signature uh, using his secret keys assigned by the content provider as i have explained in the previous slide the consumer also uses current timestamp and the desired content name to generate the signatures uh, the, con uh, the current timestamp is used to prevent any reply attacks. You can see the different signature components in the slide. On the uh, other hand, uh, at the as router side, the router verifies the signatures using the public keys associated with that consumer. If the consumer is authorized uh, and has validity period, uh, as router will forward his interest packets into the network. That means no unauthorized and revoked consumers can send interest packets into the network. We have also introduced a batch signature verification mechanism. Uh, this batch signature verification mechanism uh, is used by the content provider when the ISP sends uh, all the signatures of the consumers which it had provided its services. Our scheme has also introduced a proxy encryption phase. Uh, this proxy encryption phase is designed to enable the higher level consumers uh, to decrypt the cipher text associated with the lower level categories using their existing secret keys. For example, uh, if the content is encrypted using the public key of RI category and the uh, consumer has secret key associated with the uh, RX category, then CRI component of the ciphertext is re-encrypted using a proper proxy re-encryption key. Uh, this is done when Rx uh, is in the ancestor set of the category Ri. Similar to the uh, encryption phase, uh, our decryption phase is also divided into two parts. In the first part, the consumer decrypts the RB ciphertext part and recovers the symmetric key. Then it in the second part of the decryption phase, the consumer decrypts the symmetric key encryption part of the ciphertext using the recovered symmetric key. In the first part, uh, consumer computes D1 using the original 
CRI component of the safer tax and the secret key component are two. This is computed when the category associated with the consumer is the same with the category associated with the safer tax. Otherwise, the consumer uses uh, CRI prime component of the proxy reencryption uh, proxy safer tax and uh, security component RK1. Afterwards, uh, D2 and uh, D3 components uh, are computed and the consumer can recover the symmetric key K using uh, uh, his secret key SKIDU. And finally, uh, the consumer can uh, decrypt the symmetric key part of the C vertex using the symmetric key K. To support immediate revocation, uh, our scheme uses the concept of bilinear map accumulator. Uh, when the content provider wants to revoke some consumers uh, from a category, this phase is initiated. Now, in this phase, the content provider generates a header uh, which is sent along with the safer text. The header contains a random secret KV that can be recovered uh, only by the non revoke authorized consumers using the secret key SKIDU and the public key uh, pub witness. In a threat model, uh, we assume that the consumers may collude among themselves uh, or even with the routers. ISP is considered as an honest but curious entity. That is, the ISP uh, will perform the assigned tax honestly, but it may try to gain additional information from the system. Uh, the CP is considered as a fully trusted entity. This is a functionality comparison table. Uh, we have compared our scheme with the notable works in the literacy. We have considered essential functionalities uh, such as supports to uh, hierarchical contents, data confidentiality, DOS attack resistance, privilege revocation, accountability, and offline CP. The offline CP means that uh, the content provider can remain offline most of the time. We can see from the table that uh, our scheme supports all the essential functionalities while the other schemes do not. This is the computation, communication, and storage overhead comparison table. Uh, we have compared our scheme with the two notable works as these two works supports most of the essential functionalities like ours. The co the computation cost comparison is done in terms of cryptographic operations such as has, pairing, and exponentiation operations. On the other hand, uh, communication and storage overhead comparison is done in terms of group element size. We have considered different phases such as signature and secret generation, encryption, proxy encryption, decryption, immediate revocation, and batch verification phases to compare the computation cost. The CFATEX signature, header, and the secret key sizes are considered to compare the storage and communication overhead. Uh, we can see from the table that our scheme performs better than the other two schemes. In this presentation, uh, we have proposed an encryption based SS control scheme that supports hierarchical contents for NDN. Uh, the proposed scheme also introduced a signature verification mechanism that enables the S routers to authenticate the consumers before forwarding their interest packets into the network. Uh, as such, uh, it uh, supports uh, those attack resistance. Uh, we have uh, also proposed a privilege revocation and uh, batch verification mechanism uh, that also supports ISP accountability. We have shown that uh, uh, our scheme performs better than the other existing schemes in terms of functionalities computation, communication, and, and storage overhead. Uh, in the future, uh, we would like to complete our implementation of our scheme using mini NDN to demonstrate its performance. Thank you.